Hello, I'm Adam again, and I'm doing a computer craft tutorial because I've been playing on a Tekkit server recently. This is this is actually in Tekkit, in the single player world. But I've been playing on a Tekkit server, and a few of the people on there said that I should do computer craft tutorials. So I decided to give it a go. So I'm just going to uh, start with basic stuff and then I'm gonna show you how to do a program I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it a bit differently to some people, some people like to just say I'm gonna make like a password door and then they'll just show you making it but I want to, I'm gonna do it a bit differently so that you actually understand what you're writing so that eventually you can make your own programs I'm just going to turn that off, there we go. Right, so, let's begin. So, you're going to edit the program you want, so you just type edit. Program 1, just any name, any name you want to give it. I'm sorry if you can hear my keyboard, it's a bit, it's very close to the mic. And I, I I've moved my mic all over the room and it, it never, it always picks it up. I can't really fix it. So, the basic things in computer craft that you're going to be using mainly are print, print are these things. So you've got print here. Print basically prints anything you put inside these brackets onto the screen. Term.write does the same thing, but print, once it's done its thing, it starts a new line. So whatever you do after that in the code will be done on another line. Term.write does not do that. Plus, because it's got a term, you can use it for other stuff, but I won't go into that now. Uh, term.clear, this self-explanatory, clears the screen. Uh, term.set cursor, cursor pause. Um, in here, you'll put 1, 1, something like that. And that will put the cursor, which is this little flashing white line here at the point x1, y1, which is here where the p is. So you can change this to anything, you change like 6, 8, that's not an 8, that's a 9, but doesn't matter. But yeah, that's what you can do with it. So I'm just going to do an example of each of the, of all of this, basically how it can work. So if you do term.clear and then term.set cursor pause That will clear the screen, put the cursor in the uh, default spot, and then you can do something like print hello, and then term.write hi there. And then if we control save, control exit that, and then run the program, you'll see that it comes up with hello, hi there. And then because it's, I used term.write last, it makes it so that you start immediately after what you've written so I can now type stuff after that which is useful for a lot of things so whoops edit program right so they're the basic things and uh, they're useful you can use that for basically what I've just shown you you can't do anything fancy with it um, you can make like some form of animation with it I suppose like if you constantly keep clearing then printing again, clear, print, clear, print, stuff like that. You can make like a little animation, but it would take a long time. But I'm going to show you what you, more stuff you can do now, which is using um, variables and the if command. So variables are things that you declare. So with local a equals one. So that makes a equal to one, which means that if I was to do print a, you don't need to put the brackets in there because the brackets are in the variable, so that would print whatever variable A is, if I've done this right anyway. So let's just try that. Run one. There you go. It, it writes the word one. You can put anything in here, like hello. Run the program and it will t say hello. So that's not the best example of what you can do with it, but you can do more stuff, which is basically a password door. 
So I'm just going to show you a basic example of what a password door would be using the if command. So first we're going to need to declare a variable which is local uh, input equals read. That makes it so you can input data, user can input data. And then we're going to do the if command which is if input so if variable input and then we can do equals a so if what the user inputs is the same as what variable a is which is hello so if I type hello in then I'm going to do then and then let's say print hi so if I if I input the word hello it will type it will reply with hi and then I can do else print by and then end to end it because whenever you put an if you've got to put an end to end the if right so basically what this does is if input equals a so if input equals hello then print hi if it's not if it if the input is not a so if it's anything else if I input anything else it will print by instead so let's show that program so if I type hello it will say hi and if I run the program again and type it will type bye so that's basically a basic example of what a password door is but instead of printing hi you would output a redstone signal so I'm going to show you now how to do a password door so I might as well show you it working so I'll just get door and some redstone put door there redstone there computer there well, let's code on this one we're gonna do we're gonna do it in the startup if you do a password door do it in the startup because if you're doing a password door you obviously don't want the computer to do anything else other than the password lock so edit startup and now anything you type in here will be run every time you start up the computer so we're going to start off with local password equals pass so our password is pass so if we want to open this door we have to write the word pass okay so then we need to do the if local input equals read and now we're going to uh, do the password thing we're going to want something there so I'm going to put something in here first which is term.clear so we want it to be at the start term.set cursor pause to put it there and then term.write enter password and space there we go now this will clear the screen it will clear the screen then it will set the cursor to start and then it will write enter password and then it'll let you input the thing right after the word after enter password and local input equals read that makes it so that you can input data so you don't want to put that you put that after all this stuff because if you put it before it'll, it'll mess up so you want it after so make sure it's like this okay so now we're going to put in the if so if input equals password then print access granted like something like that just anything and now we're going to do the command to get the door open which is rs.set output and then in these brackets we want the direction so that's the redstone is on the left of the computer so we want to type in the word left and then comma and then true say that we want it to turn on and now we've got to put sleep, this is a different command and inside these brackets is how long we want it to sleep for so how long we want the door to be open for I'm going to put 5, so it'll be open for 5 seconds and then after the 5 seconds we want the door to close so we're going to put rs set output left false to say no, we do not want an output on that side and then we're going to os dot 
reboot. This will reboot the computer, and that basically means it will turn it on, turn the computer off, and turn it back on again. And because we're putting this program in the startup, and when the computer starts up again, it will immediately run this program again, which means you can instantly enter the pa password again, which is why you put it in the startup basically. So now we're going to put in the else. So else print access denied, something like that, and then os. Dot. And we want to sleep as well because we can't just do os. Dot. If we just did that, then we wouldn't see the word access denied pop up because it would print access denied and then immediately reboot the system. So we need to make sure it sleeps for about two seconds. You can actually see that it said OS, like uh, access denied, and then it will OS re dot reboot. And now we need the end. And now this should work, unless I've done something wrong. So I can reboot the computer now, and it will say goodbye. And come back on, it asks for a password. So if I type in pass, access granted, the door has opened like that. And then after five seconds, it will close. And if I type in anything else, it will say access denied and not do anything. Okay, now, as you can see, I'm typing in stuff and you can see exactly what I'm typing. Now that's not a very secure password if you're on a server. I mean, if you're if you're in a single play, player, it's fine, really, because no one else is going to see it. But if you're in multiplayer, you're going to want to keep it secure. So you're going to terminate the program by holding Control and T for five seconds, and then we're going to edit Startup. Now, to make it so that it doesn't show what you're typing, I'm going to come to this line here, where it says local input equals read, and then inside the brackets for read, we're going to change it, I'm going to put brackets, and inside, not brackets, speech marks, and inside the speech marks, we're going to type what we want instead of the letter. So we can put anything there, we can make it all O's, so everything we type is an O, but to make it look good, we're going to do it with a little, little star. So now if I save this and reboot, we'll see that everything I type comes up as a star. It means I can type pass. You don't know I've typed pass because you can't see it. But if I type that and say access granted, door will open. I can walk through because there's no other way to get through here. And uh, if I type in anything, it doesn't work. So that makes it a bit more secure. Right. So that's a password door. It's very good for uh, multiplayer. I, it doesn't really have that much use in single player unless you just want it to be, just want your world to be a bit more realistic. But in multiplayer, this is really useful. And now that I've shown you how to do it and what it all means, I've hopefully done a good job at doing this anyway. It's my first attempt at this kind of tutorial so hopefully you've learnt how to do it and hopefully you've also learnt what everything in here means um, which is basically that's your password clear set cursor blah 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 you've got it all and uh, just a few things that some people might might think is unnecessary and not do for example if input equals equals password you need two equal signs if you only have one equal sign, like here, it's declaring a variable. So if you just have one equal sign, that doesn't work. That's saying that input equals password and you've rewritten this variable here. So you need the two equals. Two equal signs mean that it's checking something. One equal sign means it's declaring something. And another thing is where I put these two brackets here, you do need them. If you don't put them there, it won't work. You do need the double brackets at the end of at the end of uh, each thing. So yeah, just make sure you do it right. If you type this right, if you type this correctly, it should work fine. So yeah, hopefully this has helped you. If I will, I'll put this code in the description so you can just copy paste it if you want. But hopefully this tutorial has shown you what everything means as well. So eventually you can make your own programs from what you've learned you can change this up a bit and eventually maybe you can go into multiplayer servers and show off 
due to the fact that you can write a password lock by yourself without any help. I don't know, but yeah. So that's password door lock. I hope you uh, enjoyed the tutorial, learned something, and uh, goodbye for now.